in thinking about sacred space in our lives, perhaps if we were to think of what senses have the most to do with sacred space, we could lean into that inclination that we're talking about physical space, that it's about touch or sight, a space that we can measure or map out. But perhaps when we are talking about creating sacred space in our lives, the most important sense could be our hearing. As Dr. Seuss writes in one of his wonderful books, ears, ears, ears. We like our ears. It's very good to hear with our ears. The Dr. Seuss is writing to children as they are growing up, trying to gain that wonderful tool and essential practice of what it means to listen. But as it turns out, that quickly becomes a lifelong pursuit. That we're always learning how to listen because it has such an impact on our lives and on the lives of others. I still remember before there was a cell phone in every single back pocket when the trend was gaining momentum and more and more people had phones that did just about anything you wanted them to do. And there was that commercial, the guy walking down the sidewalk and every few minutes would say, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? But at this season and juncture of life, as we are all adopting new language like the word Zoom, which seems to be both a noun or a verb, as in I have to be Zooming this afternoon with my staff, there's a new image that comes to mind about the importance of listening where you're on one of those Zoom calls and it's one person's turn to speak in the top left-hand corner, but as he or she begins to speak, all you see is the mouth moving and no words coming out in hand gestures as they are describing something important, but you do not know what it is because they've forgotten to touch that unmute button. And we find ourselves with a knee-jerk response of leaning into the screen as if we are going to hear better. If we have to learn to listen throughout our lives in all manner of circumstances because it has such a deep impact on our lives and on the lives around us. And it has a great impact on our faith, on creating sacred space in our lives. It's like what the psalmist writes in Psalm 42, beginning with the first seven verses. As a deer longs for flowing streams, so my soul longs for you, O God. My soul thirst for God, for the living God. When shall I come and behold the face of God? My tears have been my food day and night, while people say to me continually, where is your God? These things I remember as my poor out my soul, how I went with the throng and led them in procession to the house of God with glad shouts and songs of thanksgiving, a multitude-keeping festival. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for shall, I shall again praise him, my help and my God. My soul is cast down within me, therefore I remember you from the land of Jordan and of Hermon from Mount Mazar. Deep calls out to deep. At the thunder of your cataracts, all your waves and your billows have gone over me. That we hear in the psalmist's words the image of taste, of 
thirsting for something we long for, and also sight of seeing the face of God, but we also hear a hint of what it means to listen. The psalmist is hurting because everyone is asking, where is your God? But the psalmist used to lead people into the house of God, singing praise and thanksgiving, but now the psalmist's soul is disquieted. It has nothing to say. It has nothing to sing. And thus the question, where is God? That in order for us to have something to say, it is important for us to first listen. As deep calls out to deep, that as we long for God, we have to learn to listen for God's presence. And we flip through the pages of Scripture to see how various prophets and priests, sages and leaders of the church have listened before us. We find Moses standing there barefoot in front of a burning bush, scared and frightened to hear the voice of God. Or there is Elijah who has been longing for God, unsure of what to do. And Elijah did not hear God in the earthquake or the fire, but finally in the sound of sheer silence. Or then there was Mary, hearing the good news given to her from the angels, where she heard God's calling, saying she would have a child by the name of Jesus. Or then there was Paul who was stopped in his tracks and turned around and sent out in a different direction because of the voice he heard on the way to Damascus. And what is it that we are listening for? Is it a voice, a whisper, or a shout, or more like an echo? Or is it something more like just a presence? a sense that we are not alone? Or is it a sense of conviction, a voice that comes up from within us where our conscience is pricked and we are called to act? It could be many things that we hear of God's voice or God's presence in so many different ways. It is deep, calling out to deep. It's like that old telephone experiment where uh, two kids go to the kitchen and clean out a couple cans, tie them together with a string to see if it can truly work like a telephone. They stand on either side of the room yelling into one can and trying to make out something in the other. But when we hear God's voice, or God's presence. It's not always crystal clear. It does not always come to us with absolute certainty. But it does happen as we learn to listen. Because in listening, it opens us up. It opens us up to the beauty that we find in God's creation. It opens us up to others as we love our neighbor as ourselves. It opens us up to silence where in the silence, the only sound that we can hear is the sound of God's presence. It opens us up to ourselves, to those things stirring and churning inside of us as God brings guidance to our lives. It opens us up to Scripture to thinking about the stories of our faith and reading them and interpreting them as we tease out the very character of God. That it is learning to pay attention. Like that old telephone experiment, the tighter you pull that string, the more you're able to hear. That we learn to be open to God's presence all 
around us. One summer uh, when I was in seminary, uh, as a student, I worked at the hospital there in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, uh, as a chaplain, uh, mostly in training, uh, working with another chaplain who served as a mentor and teacher. And every week after visiting uh, patients on the floor I was assigned, I would sit down and debrief and unpack all of the conversations I had had with various patients with this chaplain, a seasoned minister who could help me uh, learn how to better uh, pastorally care for those patients. And she was a wonderful, dear uh, individual. Uh, I learned so much from her and gained so much from spending time with her. But every time we met, it was in her small corner office, surrounded by filing cabinets and bookshelves full of books. And she would first sit down behind her desk, She'd pull out the lowest filing cabinet and kick her left foot up on it as she leaned back in her chair. And before we did anything else, before we talked about the events of the day, the conversations with patients, she always started by saying, let us take a minute and just get the rest of ourselves into the room. And then we sat there in complete silence, just gathering ourselves into the room. Because we are pulled in so many different directions, we can end up leaving parts of ourselves in places all throughout the day, attached to things that we are worried about or that we didn't quite finish. But to fully be present, to fully be able to listen. We gather ourselves into the present moment. That for me, that practice said something about creating sacred space in our lives, about learning to listen to everything that we had experienced to God's presence in the very moment, to ourselves and what is going on with us. There's an ancient prayer that's been passed down through the church and different variations, but it says, God be in my head and in my understanding. God be in my eyes and in my looking. God be in my mouth and in my speaking. God be in my heart and in my thinking. And we might add, God be in my ears and in my listening. For it is there that we create sacred space in our lives. Amen.